Hi guys, welcome to yet another showing of the Sports Ed's uh, minus Andre Dixon. So I am taking over his merry men uh, with Chris <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel today. Um, hopefully I get this right, I suppose. This first off, and welcome to you guys. How's everyone doing? Hey, you did good, man. One try. Good job, good job, man. Good job, good job. Replacement's looking good, man. You might have a solid job in the future. <laughs> Hey, Bro, as, long, as long as your internet doesn't cut at the end, mate, I'm good. I'm good. Like last time. <laughs> I pray. I pray. Let's see how we get on. Let's see how we get on. I don't hear any of your fanboy dogs in the background. I don't hear Chris's AC going all out. So it looks like we're good this week. Which is good. Good. Let's jump. You know what? I want to jump straight into it. You know, because yeah, you know, some great. There's some great topics this week. Um, once again, it's just showing that sport is on the return, um, which is good and. Obviously, this, I say success of the NBA so far, what they've done, has obviously caught the eyes of a few other sports and uh, other people in the States. And Mr. Sean Payton, the, the, the ever trying to get that Super Bowl ring for the Saints, <laughs> um, is trying to get this over the line and make sure the season does take place. And more importantly, that when it comes to crunch time, they see the season through. So he suggested a post-season bubble like the NBA. Now, I think there's a few extra cool. parts in this. So, I'm going to start with you, Daniel. Do you agree with trying to get something like that done? And do you think it would actually work? Well, I'll be hypocritical and I'll be re remissant of myself to, you know, bash Sean Payton on this suggestion considering that I made a suggestion similar to this for the regular season but having it sort of three or four major hubs for each division. Um, so in that respect, I have, I have to, I have to have his, I have to have his back. That being said, um, look for me personally, I think when you when you're looking at the postseason, I think it's a little bit premature because you don't know what's going to happen in the season. You don't know if COVID actually recedes. You don't know if it increases. We don't actually know what's going on with this virus, and I think the unpredictability of this virus lends itself to not be unpredictable when it comes to planning for stuff like this. I appreciate that he's trying to think ahead, trying to think to make sure that he ensures the game. But if you are already planning for the season to go ahead with outer bubble and you're planning for it to go without fans for a lot of stadiums, what's the point of now trying to plan for a bubble when it comes to the latter stages? It's not the NBA. It's not that short. I think even if the teams, I think he said he wanted 12 teams, even just 12 teams alone, there is more personnel than the NBA operations put together for that bubble um, restart. So it has to be practical. I don't think it is practical. I think he needs to focus on sort of the season, focus on the Saints, or focus on Drew Brees, who I'm not sure if he can carry their team to a championship this season. So that's on me. Chris, get in there. Uh, yeah, the whole Sean Payton bubble postseason thing like Dan just said is kind of backwards. Um, you should be trying to figure out how to keep everyone safe now instead of waiting to see if your team is um, in the postseason. And plus, Sean Payton is making – his claim as if his team would be in that bubble. We don't know the way that the Saints have, have been going on last couple of years. Uh, I know he would want that. But um, for it, it doesn't make any sense to me for like what Dan said. I'm not going to reiterate. But let's just think of how it would probably look if the NFL went to a playoff bubble. So you have 12 teams, one city, probably uh, is 53 men on each team plus staff. So we're looking at a lot we're looking at over a thousand people in one concentrated area um just working and 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 how the city would operate i mean that would be a whole lot more uh to do and deal with than the nba is dealing with and they already said how treacherous that was to be in orlando and they obviously have smaller operations that they deal with so i don't agree with the uh, NFL and bubble if they're not starting the regular season. It seems like the NFL is sort of taking the Major League Baseball kind of um, approach when it comes to this COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. We see what's happening in the Major League. It's a total catastrophe. You understand why Sean Payton wants a bubble, but you should be thinking about doing that from the offset, not just the postseason. Uh, that one is a bit of a head-scratcher for me. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's something to be looked at, I suppose. You both made good points. Um, we just don't know what is around the corner. We don't know where this is obviously going to go. Um, so I think Sean Payton is getting a little bit ahead, in, ahead of himself. Let's deal with the first point of this season first and uh, we'll obviously go from there. Um, but yeah, still fingers crossed that we actually do see <laughs> a touchdown in that first week we're supposed to, right? Um, so yeah, that's, that's, it's good to hear. Plus, I've got to say, and I am going to say this, um, a big shout out obviously to the NBA because it has been entertaining um, watching this obviously unfold. And yeah, we've actually had some success from it. And I think you guys would agree on, on that as well. Taking us into the NBA, what we have seen so far, Vince Carter, Kawhi Leonard. Mm. He's saying he would be the GOAT if he got another championship. Now, Vince... I love you, guy, but that's a big shout. And I'd like to hear what you guys have got to say about that, considering the names that are in this <laughs> in this little sport here that we call it NBA. Kawhi Leonard, Goat, Chris, views? All right, Kawhi, I mean, under the preference of what he's talking, uh, would he be Jordan the Goat? No. Would he be this generation's Goat? There is something to be said about that for it to be an argument. Now, Granted, LeBron James, we all know, is the GOAT of his generation, whether it's the numbers, the rings, and so on and so forth. But I have to give Kawhi Leonard some type of respect if he does win another championship because, A, he would have done it with three separate teams, and, and, and he would have done it without having to get any cohesion. He wouldn't have had to warm up with the team the second year around. All those type of things that kind of happen with LeBron, that's kind of crazy for you to go to a team. Let's say he wins this year. Last year, he went to a whole other organization, whole other coast, and won. And if he wins this year, that would be pretty remarkable to do. And I would have to say under those accomplishments, he would be in the bar fight, cooler talk conversation of GOAT, but uh, not for real. We all know LeBron James, but this generation is the GOAT. Though those accomplishments if Kawhi was to win the championship this year would be pretty amazing i'm not gonna lie ooh, I mean, ooh, I ooh. see the faces here uh, for scouting around <laughs> i see i see your point i see your point but daniel looks like he's itching to, to get in with some of them facial expressions and those teeth from istanbul are, are gleaming right now so <laughs> 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 I thank God. I thank God that there is uh, no visual. Otherwise, people will see my screw face to you right now, Sam. <laughs> but going back to what said, Chris, are you absolutely kidding me? Are you joking that he, there is some argument, mate? Kawhi hasn't even played a full season. I can't remember the last time I saw him play a full season. Let alone be the goat. You have to win MVP. You have to be consistent. You have to play games. You can't take it. Come on. When you look at some of the greatest basketball players of all time. You know, you've got the, you know, you got Michael Jordan, he never took a day off. You've got LeBron, he never took a day off. you got Magic Kareem, never took a day off. you got Bird, never took a day off. You know, you look at all these sort of iconic players. They played in and out. They got MVPs. They took their, champ their teams to the championship. And less than that, outside of Toronto and the championship last year, can you really say Kawhi was the best player on his teams when he won it at the Spurs? Was he the driving force? No, he wasn't. So therefore, no, I don't, I don't agree. First of all, I don't even think the Clippers are going to win a championship. So that's another conversation for another day. But I personally cannot see quite... Mate, for me personally, you're talking about the GOAT. Even if you're talking about the GOAT of the generation, you've got LeBron. You still have Steph. People need to put more respect on Steph Curry's name. He's the reason why the three-point is the three-point of what it is right now. And, you know, why Houston played the way they played. So let's put it into context. Kawhi cannot... And I, look, I love the guy... I'm not trying to put him as an individual accomplishments. But when you either play a full season and you haven't won MVP, you cannot be, or league MVP, I should say, you cannot be anywhere near the GOAT conversation. No, nah, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. You could be, I, I, I gave it to LeBron being near. I said, look what Kawhi did. You said he, he wasn't one of the special uh, the pieces on the San, San Antonio team. Uh, he was the MVP of the finals in 2014. What are you talking about, brother? So, one there. Wasn't he the finals MVP in Toronto? He was there also. And if he wins this year, he'll be the finals MVP there. That's three. In short order. In short order. Not some long overdue kind of he's done this back-to-back -back pretty much and unless he was hurt other than when he was hurt 
That's when Kawhi wasn't winning, bro. And that's the truth. When he was hurt, they wasn't winning. He left. He went to Toronto. They won, bro. And if they win this year, I'm telling you, he will be in that conversation because of his game, his championship, his champ. The way he wins championship is like his game: nice, quiet, concise, quick to the point, killer. <laughs> I'm getting. In, I'm gonna get in here and be the referee and pull you two apart for this one. And I'm gonna just say, the claw, to me, holds a dear place in my heart for the Raptors. So yes, if he takes another championship, fair play to him. Is he go? No, but one more. And then Daniel, you've got to take this guy seriously, man. And he does. He goes as silent assassin. He doesn't say too much. He goes and gets the job done. So I'm not going to knock it. And if he does get another MVP in the finals, hmm, maybe we should revisit this one. Definitely, hey, for sure. You can get MVP in the finals. doesn't mean you're the best player on the team. And he didn't necessarily carry this first in the championship. I acknowledge you. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm I'm just saying, mate. I just don't, think, mate. You need to play. You need to at least play a full season. Like, give me a full season. Business end. Listen, business end. You get the business done. That's when it's. That's when it takes over. That's all I'm saying. But as I can see that this is getting you rattled a little bit, let's move on. <laughs> I'm gonna go. On, I'm gonna go on to some good news. And uh, surprise, surprise, we're talking about the Washington football team again. Um, but actually, some positive news. They've appointed Jason Wright, president of football for Washington football team. That is not, doesn't really go that well for me. Um, and he's an ex Cardinals player. So, you know, big up to another Cardinals uh, player. I feel like we've also seem to get to talk about all my teams somehow. I try and find another way. Um, but, Daniel, what, what, what do you think this Do you think this is a. I'm, I'm going to be. I'm going to try and sit on the fence with this. Do you think this is a move that is not say warranted but do you think it's about timing this move or do you think this is something on merit do you think for jason right and that's without taking away anything from the guy by the way um well i think it's a difficult one the reason being because when you look at situations like this and and, it, and i reflect back on you know baseball um and why is his name for me 42 why is the name um why am I forgetting his name now all of a sudden? Um, I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it. But number 42 for the, for the Dodgers. Um, when you look at that, you know, you could have said that he was a token. It was a token thing. It was a token merit. And you could say the same. Jackie Robinson, man. That's the one. Jackie Robinson. I don't know how I had a brain freeze. Thanks, Chris. Um, but yeah, you could look at the same thing and you could say the same thing in terms of, you know, you're the token individual. Um, did he deserve it? These talents deserve it. Look, he hasn't done much in that, you know, Jason hasn't done much to sort of maybe warrant it, but then you, you can argue and you can make the same thing had, um, you know, um, uh, John Elway, did he deserve it when he became team president for Denver? Yes, he won them, but had he actually become an, a, a, a you know, bona fide executive? So I think it's the timing is obviously a bit suspect. You've got a lot of people that are going to ask the question, and let's just put it out there, did he get it because he was black? You know, Washington now going through this whole new phase of, you know, sort of being a bit more politically correct with the name change, the lawsuits from sexual harassment, and now you've got your, the team's uh, first black president. And it's ironic that Washington has its first team black president after it's changed its name, assuming that Washington was the last team to have a black player on their team. So it's, uh, look, we've got to see what he can do. End of the day, football is, there's a lot of nepotism, and you can argue, no offense, Sam, did, Kings, uh, did Cliff Kingsbury really deserve the head coaching job after he got sacked from his, you know, his university? I don't think so. So, you know, there are loads of situations where people haven't really deserved the opportunity and they've got it. So for me, let's, let's give the guy a chance. Yeah, Chris? Uh, 100%. I think Washington is definitely uh, reeling to try to be on the right side of history after being on the wrong side uh, for so long. I do give them... I guess credit for moving so fast on these particular um, topics, whether it's their name change. That was kind of done for money. Um, they had some situations in the front office with uh, uh, sexual harassment. That was tough. But then they get a, some good PR news by now um, hiring Mr. Wright. Um, when it comes to did they get it right? Um, are they wrong? I don't think it matters. I think it's all based on if this man knows football. He said, they say that it's, he's the right hire at this time. That the whole racial thing is what we have to get over in this country, especially if a guy has been in the game, 
He's been around it. He's played it. Um, the people around um, feels comfortable with him in the front office. We all know the, the history on why certain hires get through qualified and not qualified. It's always for some reason when the black guy gets hired, is he qualified? We see a whole bunch of white coaches and executives get hired that don't know what they're doing from the left field, but we never question it. Well, we do question it, but we let it go. You know, maybe it's the relationship between the owner and that person and so on and so forth. So when these guys, when these black guys get hired, especially that been doing the job, played the game, been around the game, and they finally get their just due, it sucks that, um, that we say, are they, are, are, are they qualified? For instance, like Sam Cassell, at the end of the season, he got his first win as a, as a coach as, as Doc Rivers took a break, and he's like, it's due. He's been on the bench 11 years, 12 years. Why hasn't this man gotten a coaching position? But there's a whole bunch of other plethora of coaches that just get a job. So I think it's time to, for these guys that have played the game, been in the game, been around the culture of the game, to now be in the front office. It's only, it's only right. Yeah, that's good. And as you both sort of said there, there's always always going to be questions um, at any appointment that was put in at that point. Um, so yeah, and it, it is good that they're obviously they're making the steps in the right direction, um, which is which is good. So yeah, it's nice. Um, now it's sort of the section where you guys obviously get to either rant or maybe bring up a topic that stood out to you this week. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Dan. What, what's, what's the story that stood out to you um, over the last week? Um, well, so I think it'll be remiss if we don't stick on to Washington and obviously mention Ron Rivera. He's been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, first, we wish him um, all the best and a speedy recovery. Hopefully, he, he recovers and you know is fit again. He says that he's going to plan. Co- um, he's going to continue coaching into the season um, with cancer. So we'll go, we have to see what the situation is going to be, how he's going to handle that. We've seen it before with cancer um, and it's been affected in the coach. And I think Bruce Arians took over um, in Indianapolis when that happened with the head coach over there. So hopefully he gets to continue because it's a bit of a shame that this will be his first full season as a Washington has, uh, Washington's football team head coach. So it will be more of a it'll be very interesting. And with the whole new shift to the team, the whole new shift to a different organisation, I would really want to make sure that he can actually do the best that he can and, and, and be committed to it. So, you know, fingers crossed he can, you know, hopefully, hopefully this will be, um, you know, he can, he can get by and, and able to coach it and beat, and beat cancer as well. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, support from everyone uh, over here as well on that. So, yeah, fingers crossed um, he recovers. And, yeah, like I said, we can get him through the, the full season. Um, Chris? Yeah, uh, damn, Washington's been in the news every, every bit has been around. Um, our, our thoughts and prayers are definitely with Ron Rivera. Uh, and his and his and his family. Uh, my my topic of the week is uh, something that I saw about that resurfaced this week is actually the, the situation with uh, Toronto Raptors president um, Massage Ujiri and the situation that happened in last year's finals where there was an altercation on the sidelines where he was pushed or or he they they were said that he pushed a security uh, sheriff's officer or whatnot a police officer. And the new news has come out, and, and the officer had then uh, sued the organization and Masai and the NBA for damages, jaw breakage, you know, mental stress, you know all of those. They want, they want their money. But it all comes out now with a video a year later that uh, Mr. Ujiri has been correct this whole time. He was shoved twice before entering the court for absolutely no reason on a night that they were celebrating the championship that this police officer felt the need to not act for any passes, but as as the tape shows, Yajiri trying to get his press pass out or his uh, his credentials out, and he got pushed pretty pretty rough twice, and then Yajiri put shoved him back to because he really was befuddled of what was going on. So I'm glad the evidence came out that, and, and we'll see where it, where it takes it from there. But it, it's just another conversation of um, law enforcement and how they feel so entitled and brazen to not only start the altercation, but then go ahead and sue someone for something that you did. And it's just a question of law enforcement in this country. And, and the ones that are supposed to protect us are trying to use us to, for, for gain. And, and it's tough. And I hope uh, Masai uh, go, gets through it and the NBA and Toronto Raptors. But um, I hope it's a lesson learned for all of us out there. Yeah, it's almost like caught in the trying to double down 
when he tried to obviously throw it back, I like just try and double right. down on that eye a little bit, and it's uh, yeah, it's, it's not great, and yeah, it just shows you, I guess, it's all walks of life. It's affecting uh, what's going on there, yeah. so, um, which is it's a bad thing, but also kind of like, hey, you need to do something about this now. It's getting well, nice. yeah, the, the, the camera's out now. The camera's out now. But like, but like he was saying, it doesn't matter if you're a president. Um, who has the resources to fight this? How about a lot of those guys that don't have the resources to fight this in the streets? You know, that's another part of his message. So we just want to keep saying that out there that, that you know, that they, they, we want to be respected in the streets. We want the, the same dignity and respect that you will give anybody, even as the president of the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And uh, yeah, hopefully we do make the steps in the right direction. Um, we're seeing little pieces um obviously people standing up for it a little bit more so yeah let's 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 hope we do go in the right direction um just gonna say one from my side i've got to say something that's obviously stood out to me um is again i'm gonna come back to the nba i just think the the success the buy-in from everyone even within this bubble um has really um been impressive for me so again i'm just gonna give them another shout out to that and everyone, if you get a chance, go and watch Hard Knocks. I'm watching it and it's giving me that buzz again. It's not just the stories. You can see these guys are, are back. And actually interesting to see how they're dealing with COVID. Um, the players, you're seeing some of the protocols before the season's even started. So if you get a chance, try and do that. Um, and yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll get to... So obviously see the behind the scenes and uh, it's quite nice to have the two sides with the Chargers and the Rams involved um, and yeah just go out and uh, enjoy a bit of football leading up to the season and fingers crossed we have a season um, but yes yes guys it's been an absolute pleasure to host you two today um, hey you did a good job Sam you did good right there yeah you did a really good job <laughs> one take good job <laughs> Yeah, Dre's gone on the uh, registered, like deregistered list. We'll, we'll get him out. We'll be having that talk. <laughs> I don't know what we can get on the trade for him. What on the trade wire? Someone, someone have a little chat. But uh, oh no! <laughs> but no, guys, been a pleasure to everyone that's listening. Uh, please join us next week. Um, feel free to jump into all our other shows um, in previous previous weeks on YouTube, Instagram, and be sure to follow the guys um, on their own socials where they'll give you. Um, up to date news throughout the week. Peace.